In this video, I come across a collection of about 150 short boxes. You're not going to want to miss this one. Welcome everybody to another episode of Comics with Bonix. Today, we come across a huge collection of about 150 short boxes. And I've been working with this seller for quite a while now, been going back and forth. So he invited me to come over and take a look at his boxes to see what I will be able to pick up. And if you guys haven't checked out my other videos, I'm currently doing a giveaway right now of an X-Men comic book lot. If you guys want to find out how to win this lot of X-Men comic books, please check out my top five videos of 2020. And you can find out how to earn a maximum of three entries to win that comic book lot. So just a bit of a backstory on how I was able to come across this collection. I came across this seller on OfferUp and he was offering some of his grade books. So I already made a purchase with him a little while back and have been in contact with him for a little bit, for a few months, back and forth through texting. And he mentioned that he was going to be unloading a big portion of his collection. So he wanted to schedule an appointment for me to come out and look at his boxes. And that's exactly what I did. So in these next couple clips, you're going to see what I was able to come across. And I was able to record some footage when I was there, digging through some boxes. So I hope you guys enjoy the next couple clips.
So as you can see, there was quite a bit to go through. I knew I wasn't going to be able to look through all the boxes in one session. Spent about three hours going through as many boxes as I could. He did his best to organize, but I think ultimately he just couldn't find the time to organize all his boxes. So a lot of the books were not in any particular order at all. Some of them were organized by character, but overall they were just scattered all over the place. So I did my best to maximize the three hours that I could. Did my best to pick out the books I wanted to take home. And then the negotiations started. This was the first time that he would be selling his books. So going into that, I knew it was going to be tough for him to let a lot of them go. He felt that they had higher value than they actually were. Some of the comments he made was, this is not a garage sale, even though we were picking out of his garage. And also he mentioned that some of these books are going on eBay for these prices. So a lot of back and forth was me trying to provide information of where I was coming from and trying to get on the same page as far as prices. Big portion of the three hours that I was there was negotiating a specific price for these books. So in the end, I ended up picking up one short box, maybe a little bit less than one short box because I wanted to kind of start there and then see if he'd be interested in me coming back. So hopefully we get a little bit more next time when we do visit him. But let's go through the books of what I did end up getting. In the end, I ended up negotiating on the price of $240 for about 65 books. So let's go over those books now. First one that I was able to pick up is Oblivion Song number one. Not a huge key, but I thought this was a pretty cool one to pick up out of the lot. Next one on the list is going to be Incredible Hulk 441. This is an homage to the Pulp Fiction movie. Next one on the list is Sensational She-Hulk number 40. Always love this cover. Pretty awesome. And now we got Masters of the Universe number one. I just love Masters of the Universe and this was a great cover. And this one came in a pretty high grade as well. I would say at about 8.5 to a 9.0. Next one up is Daredevil 181, Death of Elektra. Pretty high grade as well, about an 8.5. Next one on the list is Punisher number one of the ongoing series. Next up is gonna be X-Men 128. So as you guys can see, there was quite a bit of range in this collection, anything from 90s, a bit of copper, some bronze, and a little bit of silver. Mostly it was falling into the 90s and copper age. Some bronze in there, so pretty decent grade X-Men, and I'm going to pick that up every time. So next up on the list is Uncanny X-Men 184, first appearance of Forge. Not a very high grade, I would say a mid-grade copy. Next one up is Uncanny X-Men 148, first appearance of Caliban. Next is Uncanny X-Men 171, first time Rogue joins the X-Men. Next up, keeping on Uncanny X-Men, is first appearance of Jubilee, Uncanny X-Men 244. Next up is X-Men Annual number 14, which is considered the first cameo of Gambit. So pretty nice one there. So next I have X-Men number three from the Jim Lee series. Always love that cover there. And next up, would it be an X-Men 90s collection without the first appearance of Omega Red, X-Men number four? This is a pretty high grade copy. I would say about 9.4 to 9.6 range. Could be a potential with a press to become a 9.8. So we'll see. We'll see if we'll be submitting that one. Next up, we have X-Men number 11, classic Jim Lee cover. Now we have a couple X-Factor copies, X-Factor number one. 
And also we have X Factor number six, first appearance of Apocalypse. This one's a pretty high grade copy. I would say it can fall about a nine two or higher. So pretty nice to find that one. So next up we have King Size Annual Avengers number 10, which is the first appearance of Rogue. This one I would rate it at about a 6.0 to a 6.5. So a decent find there. So I said that there was some Silver Age in this collection and I was able to find Tales of Suspense number 94, which is the first appearance of MODOK. Pretty nice copy there. I would say it's about a 3.0 to a 4.0. Next up, we have Eternals number five. So that helps with my Eternals run. Pretty nice copy. And also we have Eternals number 19. So the next portion, we were able to find a quite a bit of Amazing Spider-Man. So we'll go through these fairly quickly. We have Amazing Spider-Man 250. Nice Hobgoblin cover. We have another Hobgoblin cover in Amazing Spider-Man 260. Next one, we have Amazing Spider-Man 313 in a newsstand, which is a lizard cover by Todd McFarlane. Another Todd McFarlane in Amazing Spider-Man 318. And also 322. 327 and 328 in a newsstand against the Hulk. Great cover there. Continuing with Amazing Spider Man, we have 331, 332, which is uh, Eric Larson cover with Venom, 334. 335, also have Amazing Spider-Man 338, 339, great Doc Ock cover, and a couple of Carnage keys, we were able to find 344, which is first appearance of Cletus Cassidy. Also, we have a couple copies of 345. Actually, three copies of 345. And then we also have a copy of 347. And also picked up the first cameo of Carnage, which is 360. So a nice pick up there. And then also the third appearance of Carnage in 363. And we have Amazing Spider-Man number 52, which is a J. Scott Campbell cover. And we have Web of Spider-Man number 35. Also able to pick up a couple of copies of Spider-Woman number one. That one's a lower grade copy with some stains. This one is a higher grade copy. About a 7 to an 8. We also have Web of Spider-Man number 118. First appearance of Scarlet Spider, I believe. Couple copies of Spider-Man Unlimited number 1. Absolute Carnage series. We also picked up Spider-Man 2099. Spectacular Spider-Man number 90. That's an early appearance of the black suit. Also happy to pick up Amazing Spider-Man 252, first appearance of the black suit. So awesome find there. This is about a mid grade though, but for roughly about $3 a book, couldn't complain much there. So the last series we were able to pick up was Fantastic Four. 
And we have Fantastic Four 265, part of the John Byrne run, 267, 268, which is a cool Doom cover, 276, 279, 282, 283, 288, 289, 290. All of these I didn't have in my collection, so I wanted to fill up my run of the John Byrne Fantastic Four. 292. 294 and the last few were Silver Age Fantastic Four. We have Fantastic Four number 63 and last one of the whole lot is Fantastic Four number 65 first appearance of Ronan. So that is the whole lot guys about 65 books total for grand total of $240 which comes out to about $3.69 per book, which I think was a pretty decent deal. Um, I will say that I w approached him with an offer. It was a lot of back and forth. I approached him with an offer of $150 for the 65 books. It was actually more, it was about 85 books to begin with. There was also a low, low to mid grade Secret Wars 8 in there. There was also uh, some Batman books but he felt that was too low of an offer. He didn't really want to approach me with a price, so I had to offer something that I felt was on the low end, so I had some wiggle room to move up and meet him to where we thought was fair for both sides. So ultimately, we met at $240, which I feel is still a fair deal for both parties. I might make a video in the future of what tips I would offer collectors when negotiating. There were some mistakes I did during this process of negotiating. I did indicate that that price was a certain amount per book. Like for example, I offered $150 for about 80 books, which is roughly about $2 a book. When he heard $2 a book, he didn't. it didn't sit well with him. So I would suggest if you guys want to negotiate with a seller, Try not to use dollar per book as a way of negotiating. I think it feels like he's not getting his value per book. So try to concentrate on the grand total of what you're paying for all the books and work your way from there. So that's everything, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, if you guys want to check out my other videos to join in the giveaway, we have until the end of the year till I pick the winner of the giveaway of the X-Men lot. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Please let me know how you feel about the amount I paid. Was it too much or did you feel it was fair for both sides? I would love to hear your feedback. And again, I want to thank you for joining me here at Comics with Vonix. And remember, as always, collect your passion. We'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye.